Folks, I'll be sharing my techniques and this technology at these upcoming spaces. Sure hope to meet you there. Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, October the 29th, and this is the futures in five. We're taking a look at the ES. Now you'll notice that these areas have big bounce patterns associated with them. I am back on the mainland and uh, good to be back. Good to be back. But here's what we're looking at. The next trigger space is this area right here that's got a ton of motion. If we cannot get up and stay up over this area right here, which I continue to get triggers on, it means that we still have a ton of sellers here sloping downward, the motion to watch. We are trying to hold a bottom, folks. If we look at the formation on this tight time frame, we're going to see an inverted head and shoulders pattern sort of building, uh, which suggests that this might pull all the way back to here and then begin to move up, or it could just go ahead and move up, right? Here is the area that we want to look at for support. That's 2690 or so. If it loses that level, we've got fade action into the next volume profile of consequence. All right, so got a lot of things going on here. Ton of cross current. Look at the slope. No matter what, folks, big bounces going to be sell offs. This is just not an appropriate space for us to buy and hold. Everything still looks very bearish. And the longer it stays this way, the deeper we can lose in the space. So we want to be super careful here in the formations. Every system I have tells me that my bounces are going to come into resistance. However, if I'm trading intraday, long might be the way I need to go. So watch for this in the space. Of course, I do trade both intraday and swing in different account spaces. And so, you know, there's a lot to look at here, but I do have these levels up here. You can stop and then see where these motions should move. Let's take a look at the NQ. Same sort of thing going on. Low volume pocket, a lot of sell off, much more likely below 69.51. You can see that sellers are all the way up into the 70.46 to 70.83 area. That's going to be the first zone I'll look for a trigger point in terms of saying, hey, listen, we're getting close to a frontline resistance zone. As it holds this region, our pullbacks should dip and then bounce. This is a primary Woody's pivot that is a monthly Woody's pivot. So we're going to watch for that uh, fairly closely. But everything says pullbacks are buy zones. Sorry about that. Taking a look at the YM, same sort of thing. Below 24.38, prone to more sell-off, trying to get into these resistance zones. That's going to be the first pass that we want to look at uh, as it comes up into this space, you are going to see sellers at the first pass. That is what this mechanic looks like, folks. So you watch it come back and hold support repeatedly. You know it's trying to build a bounce intraday. You've got to be alert here and not just think, hey, listen, I, I just got to find out where to buy. It would be lovely, but that's not what we're looking at in these spaces here. Very landlocked here in the zone. We can see that this level here was the last big area of congestion. We're going to move up above it this time. And we're going to look at 66.92. Of course, that puts us 50 something cents away from that region. And so that sitting like resistance right now, this area at 67.72, very important. But we do have buy triggers that send us up into the low volume profile areas, and we are extremely compact. Anticipate sellers above, anticipate buyers below. In the middle, going to be a mosh pit. All right, lastly, taking a look at gold, we can see that this was a space that we talked about having trouble here. It extended well above resistant zones, so I still have an alert. I don't have an alert there anymore, it's gone, but we have this resistance area, and now our general support zones landlocked. Look at this volume profile underneath. It's beautiful. Now, the more beautiful a volume profile looks, the worse it is to trade right in the middle. And that's where this chart was before it lost these edges. My supposition is this, underneath 1230, it's going to be much more prone to sell off. Right now, it's going to bounce. That's what makes me a little unnerved about 
just buying along in the general futures event and moving forward because I do know people trade these in an inverse relationship. Whether I think that's valid or not remains to be another topic we can discuss ad infinitum at some other space, not here, but we are looking at this. Buyers still holding up. There is a general temperament of uh, buying pressure here, but traders are not afraid to let things dip deeply into the space. As long as we hold 1224, however, we're still in a fairly solid buy zone. This is the kind of chart where we say, hey, my dips are going to run me into buyers. That concludes the futures in five. Good luck trading.